Welcome everybody and thank you for joining us on our second official one-shot for Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, this one-shot is called The Huntsman, as I'm sure you have been aware or you see on the screen right now. And from here, I'm just going to let our DM, Tony, take it away. Go for it, Tony. Thanks, Paul. Hello, everybody. Thank you guys so, so much for coming out for our second uh, in the series of Burning Barrel Presents Dungeons & Dragons one-shots. Um, last month, we did our very first one with We're Not Soldiers, and this month we return with a completely different tale. And this one is called The Huntsman. For anybody who has not heard... This is the setup for our session. On these fair lands, all that matters is the hunt. From lands beyond measure, trackers, hunters, sportsmen who love the thrill of the chase and hunt have gathered in the lands of Garkas. Build as the Huntsman's Paradise, creatures both foreign and domestic are fair game at the Orthil Resorts, where the call for competition has brought even more newcomers to this mecca of the hunt. A competition, sponsored by the Ujani family, owners of the Orthil Resorts, is calling for the biggest, baddest blood there is out in the wild. This competition only lasts for five days, but the victor who brings back the most impressive catch of all will be called Hunter's Extraordinaire and will be granted a rather impressive sum of money. Our fair hunters aren't quite sure of how much money, but not a single one of them has heard of a figure less than six figures. While you may not have the experience hunting down creatures like some of the other grizzled vets, the organizers of the event have made note of your energy and tenacity as opposed to the vast majority of the people entering this contest. Our fair hunting teams have five days to bring back the most impressive trophies of them all and work as a team to survive these harsh woods. There is no telling what kinds of vicious beasts are out there, and there's no turning back now. So, in our campaign today, we have four people who will be joining us. Some of them, it is their first time in Dungeons & Dragons. Others have a little bit more experience, but all the same, they've decided to join us for this campaign. So, I'm going to go ahead and start introducing our players. Uh, today, we have playing our Dragonborn Cleric, Neslin. We have Astro Gamer. Okay. Uh... uh Alrighty. Can you hear me? Nope, you go ahead. Yes, now we can hear you. Now we can yeah. hear you. Go ahead. Hey. Hey. Alrighty. So, also joining us as well, we have a Goliath Barbarian by the name of Nala. It's Hannah, aka Cook Me 25. Silence! I kill you! Okay. I'm sorry. I really wanted to make that joke. That's okay. That's okay. You'll be killing a lot of things, hopefully, in the very near future. Woo! Also joining us as well, we have a shard mind bard by the name of Cosmo, as played by Final Deluxe. Hey, hey how you going? doing? Going well. Um, going well. And yourself? All right. I'm sorry. Um. Yeah. Uh, I'm doing fine. Uh, Wonderful. This is my first time doing this, so go on head, head first, I guess. Don't worry, we'll try to be gentle. Note how the term try there is the optimal term. Oh boy. And also, rounding out our party, we have a Deva wizard by the name of Mathis, and he is being played by Knight of Servia. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Hi. Doing... <laughs> Doing pretty good, doing pretty good. Uh, hopefully you're excited to get this rolling, as I am, so yeah, we're going to go ahead. Ah, uh, All right. So one Hi. joke I'll make. So we're going to go ahead, and we are going to get started <laughs> on this session for the day. So when we begin our campaign, we are in the night before four our tournament begins and people have been assigned to stay in uh, rooms within the resort they have been grouped up into the teams that they will be playing as a part of if they did not arrive as a pre-registered team so the first person to make their way into the room is nala 
Nala, seeing as you're the only person in the room at this point, what do you do? I, um... I, I immediately go to my chambers because I don't really want to bother meeting anyone. Okay, then. So you go ahead and you pretty much claim the room for yourself, and mm-hmm. you're just kind of chilling in there, okay? Mm-hmm. A few minutes later, uh, you hear the door open as the next member of your team walks in, and it is Cosmo. So Cosmo, seeing as you're in this room, what do you do? Immediately go to the couch. Okay. Because so you're just gonna I, crash just, I just need, I just need like warm, need warm. Okay. Awesome. Fire is right there, and it's really nice. Alrighty. Uh, so a few minutes after you arrived, you've been on the couch. Um, a few minutes later, uh, Neslin walks in. And Neslin, what do you do? Um, I'm. I see um, him on the couch, and I go introduce myself. Okay. Go ahead and have that conversation then. Loader. Hi. How are you? Good. I'm Neslin of Lyric Accord. Well, I'm Cosmo. Um, yeah, that's all you really, really need to know about me. Also, I have uh, something pretty sweet dropping next week. Never mind. No, I'm, not going I'm not doing that. I have some pretty sweet drop next week. You may want to check it out. After this hunt is over, of course, because, well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Neslin, what is your reaction to this? Okay. Um, I'm going to start walking away to the table. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um,. So while you're walking away to the table, uh, the final member of your team walks in, and it is Mathis. Mathis, what do you do? Uh, I immediately head to the uh, first room I could find. Okay. Partly because I could hear the conversation that they just had. (laughs) Okay. Okay. And then just so you guys are clear, if you're out of combat, you guys can move as many squares as you want to. It's in combat. I need you guys to move one square yeah. at a time. All right. Okay. Excellent. So you decide to claim that room for yourself. Uh, do you do anything else for the evening? or? Uh, I'll be up for a while, so I'll just be reading a, a book I've read a thousand times before. Okay. Uh Nala, so you're in your room, uh, solitary by yourself. Is there anything mm-hmm. that you're doing for the duration of the evening? Um, I, uh, I'm k- sitting there, kind of cleaning up my, cleaning my weapons, making sure everything's all, making sure I'm, um, all of my everything is ready to pretty much go. And then I, uh, I tuck in early to make sure that I'm well rested for uh, the hunt tomorrow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Neslin, are you doing anything at this moment in time besides just sitting at the table? Um. I guess I'll decide on stream over here. Okay. And now I'll pray, I guess. Okay. Cord. That's fine. So you're praying to your deity cord then? Yep. Okay. Excellent. And then Cosmo, you're just kind of hanging out on the couch. Do you have anything else that you're going to be doing for the evening? Are iPods lore friendly? No. <laughs> okay. Dang it. Okay. Um. Uh, I'm just sitting here, just repeating songs in my head that I like. I don't know. Okay. So, at this point, we're going to go ahead and kind of fast forward it a little bit. Um, the one thing that your party does know is that when you all checked in, that you did register uh, with the uh, with the tournament organizers, and they did say that the, uh, whatchamacallit, it's the orientation for... Uh, the hunt would be tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. So everybody at that point is expected to uh, report to the Orthil Resort's uh, main lobby. And at that point, the orientation would begin proper. So 
that much you guys do know upon checking in. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward to about, say, uh, we'll go ahead and say it is 8 in the morning. Everybody is considered to have had an extended rest at this point, if they required sleep, that is. If not, otherwise, you're still fine. Um, we'll go ahead and just kind of roll up from the bottom, I guess. Cosmo, are you still just hanging out on the couch, or are you... I fell asleep on the couch because, uh, yeah. Okay. I... Well, at 8 a.m., are you considered up yet, or are you still asleep? I'm just getting up. Oh, okay. And I am groggy. So, okay. Yeah. Neslin, it is 8 a.m. Ha- are you up yet? And if you aren't... Actually, that's a good question. Just, are you up yet? Um, I would say yes. Okay. Have you been up very long, or...? Um... Not much longer, maybe 10 minutes, i say. Okay, so you've been up for just a little bit, kind of just getting everything together for the morning, that sort of deal. Um, Mathis, 8 a.m., what are you doing? I've been up for half an hour now. Okay, all right, so you've been up, kind of just getting everything prepared for the morning, that sort of deal? Uh, pretty much. Wonderful. Nala, 8 a.m., what are you up uh, to? I am just wait up. Uh, wait, how how long has it been since daybreak? I've been up uh, since daybreak. That way, is it? Okay. If it's just, either it's just now daybreak, or I've been up since daybreak. You've probably been up then for about an hour. Yeah. Okay, so you've been up for about an hour, just kind of preparing everything for the day and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and say it's eight o'clock. You've got a couple of hours before, <laughs> um orientation begins you guys have the option of continuing to get ready in your room you also have the option to consider go getting something to eat before the orientation so what Um, do you guys choose to do we'll just reverse it around nala i will uh, i step out of my room and um i uh, move to go get something to eat and i see uh i ignore the whoever's on the couch i don't okay i don't where i don't know where food is i guess i'll assume here Okay. Um, yeah, so your tables are right there, that sort of yeah. thing. Um, I, uh, I eat something while I have access to food still. Okay, yeah. Um, when you uh, step out of your room, like, on the table, there's, like, bowls of fresh fruit and pastries and stuff that were brought mm-hmm. up to your room earlier. Okay, yeah. Maybe less than an hour ago. So they're they're still all in really good shape. Like, they weren't, like, something that was left there overnight. Right, right. right. Now you're good. Okay. And um, with... The, uh, with the fruit and stuff like that, you notice there's a small note underneath the bowl of fruit. Like, there's an envelope sticking out. I pick it up and I read it. Okay. So, you open up the envelope, which has an, uh, Orthil Resorts seal on it. Mm -hmm. And the note says, if it has walked this land, I will find it. If it hasn't, I will find it anyways. It's written on ornate parchment with the seal of the Orthil Resorts on it, and written on the bottom of the page is the number 27. I uh, I stick it and I put it in my pocket, not okay. telling the others about it. Okay. So you're kind of eating. Uh, Mathis, how about you? Do you choose to get any of the food off of the table, that sort of business? Uh, okay, so I walk out of my room, see Nala on the table and and I sit into the chair adjacent to her. Okay. I look up but then um I look up as soon as he sits down but immediately go back to doing what to going back to eating. Okay. And then Mathis, do you choose to grab anything to eat? Uh I see a banana on the table. Mm-hmm. I, I swallowed that whole peel and all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then I then I attempt to start up a conversation with Nala. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, so there's a lot of fruit here. You must be one of the su- poor, sorry suckers I have to work with. Well, that's not really a proper way to treat your teammates now, is it? If it was up to me, I wouldn't have teammates, but they wouldn't re- let me register as an individual. If you impede my progress, fear not, be- if you impede my progress to win, I will not hesitate to kill you. 
Good to know. Good to know you're confident in your abilities. Don't think that you can kill me so easily. I just kind of stare at him and then go back to eating. Okay. <laughs> wow. Um, so while that's <laughs> unfolding, uh, Neslin, what do you choose to do? Um, I also go out um, very past the couch and then uh, I go and to the table and to grab something to eat. Okay. Is there anything on particular in the table that catches your eye that you wish to take? or uh, Is there any meat? Uh, none that you can see, no. It's a pretty, it's a fresh assortment of fruit and, uh, pastries. <laughs> okay, then I grumble about having no meat and then take a pastry or something. Jump on it. Okay. And then, Cosmo, what are you up to? You're just kind of stirring on the couch still. What are you up to? Um. Are there any restaurants near here because I as I overheard the conversation I just wanted to be like I just want to get out of here man um, I just can... I, I can't eat here man okay can you go ahead and roll for me a streetwise check to see if you know of anything within the establishment all right hold on <coughs> All right. 18. Okay. 18. Um, so you don't know necessarily any restaurants, but there is a small, um, there is a small cafe downstairs that may be offering uh, other fare other than what's been brought up to your room. All right. I'll go down there. Okay. So you're going to go ahead and head on down there. Right. Okay. So by the time that you get down there, um, it's, Probably about nine o'clock. Um, what do you do while you're down there? Um, well, I go to the well. What does the cafe look like? Um, the cafe. It's kind of a small room, maybe about thirty feet by thirty feet squared. Um, kind of ornate, uh, wooden carved furniture. Um. It seems like they may have um, they may have some of the same pastries and fruits that were brought up to the rooms, which may lead you to believe that they provided the stuff uh, for the rooms. Uh, but additionally, it also seems like there may be some additional stuff, like perhaps coffee or something like that down there. They may actually have drinks down there, as opposed to what was in your room. All right, so I asked one of the patrons, uh, hey, can I get like some black coffee? And maybe a uh, croissant. A uh, what? What was the second one? Uh, croissant. Or croissant. They kind of eye you up a little funny and they say, Well, I've never seen me a crystal man need to eat before, but sure. Hey, and listen, kinda... man. Hey, listen. I don't get out much, okay? So I need some food right now. The two, uh, the two people behind the counter kind of just shoot a quick glance at each other, and one person goes and gets the croissant, and the other one pours a uh, cup of coffee. And then they <laughs> ask, are you here for the tournament? Hell yeah. I... Wait, tournament? The hunting competition. That. Oh, that. Oh, yeah. I totally blanked out. Sorry. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm here for that. Okay, great. It's on the house then, and they kind of push the stuff towards you. Then I mutter quickly to myself, "Oh, was a turn? Okay, yeah, yeah." All right. So while you're down there, you're kind of just enjoying that one. Uh, upstairs, back in the lobby or in your uh, main room, uh, it is now nine o'clock. What do you guys choose to do? I begin to. I uh begin to make my way downstairs to the lobby because I don't, I refuse to be late. And I look at, before I leave, I look to the others and go, do not be late and ruin this for us. And then I disappear. Okay. Disappear. It's magic. Wait, wait I'm still on the couch. 
Oh, wait, yeah, you're on the couch, too. Not anymore. <laughs> Great. <You're> <laughs> um, Mathis, Neslin, what are the pair of you up to? I'm also going to go head down to the lobby right now. Okay, so I'm going to make you disappear like that, too. So, uh, uh, Mathis, I'll you're be... alone in the room. I'll be making my way downtown as well. I'll be walking a oh little bit God, fast, man. but I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay. So you guys all kind of start making your way to the lobby. You're no longer in your room. So as you get to the lobby, you notice it's kind of... It isn't necessarily very full at this time. There are a few people that are just kind of lingering around there. Nala gets there first. Um, yeah, there are just there are kind of a few people that you notice there. Um not a ton of them have arrived yet, but it is also still about an hour before the uh, event orientation is set to begin. And uh, up at the front, you see uh, this gentleman. I just kind of wander around and kind of make sure, and you know, I, I go up and ask the gentleman, which way is the speaker going to be facing? He says, well, you're looking at the speaker right now, so uh, this way. Fantastic, thank you, sir. And I kind of make myself, uh, make my kind of way to linger around, like, the front where I'll be closest. Okay. So while you're kind of hanging out there, uh, Neslin arrives shortly thereafter. So, Neslin, what do you do as you arrive? You see this gentleman in the front, and then you see uh, Nala up near the front. Um, I guess I go take a seat waiting, I guess. Okay. Oh, that's cool. I didn't realize the grid actually lined up like that perfectly for that seat. That makes me actually a little happy. Um, so while <laughs> you go ahead and take your seat then, uh, Mathis makes his way down as well. Uh, I, I look to my right, then I look to my left, and I nose the books, and I get distracted. Okay, so you head straight for the books... Um, is there anything in particular that you're searching for, or? Uh, not particularly, since it seems like every one of these books I've read at some point or another. Okay, so you just grab a random book off the shelf? Uh, nothing piques my interest, so... Oh, okay. I just immediately stand on the opposite side of Ma of uh, Nala, mainly because okay. I don't want to get my... I don't want to get my ass killed. Sure, sure. Uh, Cosmo, it's about 9 a.m. Are you still in the cafe, or have you decided to make your way to the lobby? Um, I make my way to the man, it, like, right here, as fast as I can. Okay. Uh, and I just walk up to him and ask him, Listen, man, I didn't know there was a tournament going on today. I just, I thought I was coming here for, for a concert, man. Man, this is tournament. I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, man, awesome, man. the man begins to laugh and he says, well, it is indeed a tournament, a hunting tournament, mind you. And I assure that you met your teammates because the people who you were staying in the room with, well, they're who you'll be working with today and for the next few days. Hey, they're scary, man. There's this one lady who is, like, who is maybe has urges to kill people and that fucking terrifies me okay he I kind of laughs can't stand this he laughs and he says oh don't worry i'm sure it's all pent-up aggression that she may be saving for the hunt and he kind of grins better not kill me. she better not kill me because i have mixtape sweet mixtape dropping next week <laughs> okay he kind okay. of his interest is kind of peaked, and he says, well, then perhaps if you do make it back from the hunt, uh, perhaps I'll have to sample some of these wares. All right, man. All right, man. Wait, are mixtapes floor friendly? <laughs> I, 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 if I may you're interject. If you're I may interject. Okay. Uh, I overhear this conversation, and then I exclaim, wait, this is a pre-war... A device. How do you have your hands on a mixtape? Uh, 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 
Tell I, me where you found I, this right now. I, 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 um, I made it. I uh, reversed engineered it from some metal. Uh, uh. <laughs> oh God. I yeah. I reversed engineer it and engineered it. I'm sorry. Uh. I get yeah. up to his ear. We'll talk later. Oh. Okay, I feel very faint, and I immediately sit down right here, <laughs> and I just calmly, and I just oh, like, put shit. my head this... down on the table. Oh, this is great. Okay, so time passes. Uh, more people eventually show up until eventually the room is filled with probably an estimate of. Oh, I would say around 250 people that a few of whom maybe you saw in passing when you were checking in to the resorts, but otherwise you don't recognize a whole ton of them. Um, it strikes 10 o'clock and uh, the man up front kind of clears his throat and uh, the room falls silent and he begins to speak to the group. Greetings. One and all fair hunters, my name is Henry Ujani. I am the head of the Orthil Syndicate. My grandfather, Oscar Orthil Ujani, founded this group with the hopes that we could create a safe haven for hunters, a paradise for our kind. Forty years later, I can say that my grandfather's mission has been fulfilled. The Orthil Resorts, here in Garkus, remains the finest hunting sanctuary in the lands. And of course, what would hunting in the biggest and best ground in the world be without offering the biggest and the best prizes? Today, we will finally reveal our official prize pool for this year's Hunter's Extraordinaire competition. As you're all aware, teams are limited to four members who will all be led by a guide through the grounds, one of our finest Orthil lore masters. These teams of five will have two different prizes based on participant and employee. As Orthil lore masters are already on payroll, they will receive a bonus of 50,000 gold on top of their already very generous pay. And you can see the kind of group of people that are kind of uh, up front kind of in this area uh, assembled around Ujani, like you see several of them, like their eyes widen, their jaws just kind of like almost hit the floor. Like the fact that he's willing to drop that kind of money on top of them is a fact that is not lost on any of them as this is serious business now. And then he looks back out to the crowd and says, for our champions of the hunt, those who have traveled to these far lands, each member of the winning team, will earn themselves 125,000 gold per hunter. Only the Orthil Resorts can put this kind of money for the hunt. Half a million gold on the line is no small purse to scoff at, so bring your best hunting game with you. Remember, five days is all you'll have to bring me back the biggest trophies you can. Each team will have the same amount of time in the field. However, we will be releasing you in different phases. Each phase will be released in half hour intervals, but will be required to come back at that same time five days from now. No squad of hunters will have more time in the field than any other. With all the formalities out of the way, let the event begin! The first dispatches will begin in a half an hour, and lore masters will be assigned to your groups in short order. I ask for a representative of each group to come forward and determine which dispatch you will be a part of. So at this time, he asks for one member of each team to report forward to him, so that way he can determine in which group you are being dispatched in. So if the four of you could meet and determine who you want to send forward for your representative, go ahead and do that. I don't even say it. I don't even bother to meet with him. I immediately walk forward to him and go, I will so be representing I. our group. I did. Good lord. I was right behind her as she said it. <laughs> oh boy. I'm a little bit. 
He That's says, cool, are you all in the same group? Unfortunately. Yes. Apparently Begrudging, so. Begrudgingly. Say. He kind of looks over, and he says, well, first come, first serve, then. And he asks, and he hands a small cube to Nala. Nala, if you could roll me a 1d6, please. Sure. Uh, forgot a letter there. Really? You want to be like that with me? Thank you. Ah! Really? He says, lucky for you, it looks like you're going to be a part of the first Dispatches Out. God. Lovely. Thank you you'll so much, all, Kitsarai. You'll all be heading out in a half an hour. We'll be distributing Lore Masters to Dispatch Group 1 in 20 minutes. If you wish, you may hang around in the lobby, or you may also take a quick visit to our supply stands to pick up anything you may need before heading out on your journey. Best of luck, hunters. Thank you, sir. I hope to be seeing you again. I, I move away from him to allow other people to, unfortunately, go forth. Okay. So at this point, you guys are part of group one. You are going to have about 20 minutes in the game before your group is dispatched. You have an opportunity to check out the down area around here. There is also a supply uh, shack kind of over and off uh, this away. If you guys wish to pick up any last minute supplies before going in to uh, getting your lore masters up to you guys. What do you all choose to do? I will start with Neslin. Uh, I guess I'll go to play a uh, check. Okay. Mathis, are you going with him? Uh, no, I'll just, I'm going to tear Regrettably, I'm going to tag along with Nala. Okay. Nala, where are you going? To the supply stand to see what they have. Okay. Well. So it looks like Mathis <laughs> is going as well. Cosmo, are you going with them to the supply stands? I'm going... I'm not going to the supply stands. I'm going to go okay, with... Okay, so um, you're going to go ahead and stay here, then. Well, I'm... Can I go ahead with uh person who's not going with Nala? So you're going with Neslin? Yeah. Okay, Who's so Neslin's going... going to the supply stands. Okay. <laughs> Wait, what? Ah. Neslin said he was going to the supply stands. With, he's going with me, not with wherever. Not the opposite, sorry. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. Never mind. Okay. This is just to so disregard just, that. So you're just going to hang out in the lobby then? Uh, I guess I'll wander my way alone to the supply stands. Okay. So eventually all four of you are going to wind up at that supply stand, so we might as well just put you all there. Wow. Uh, 